Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here, hoping that you're having a wonderful day. So we made it into Article 250, and over the last few code cycles, I probably like 2011 all the way up to 2023, I didn't spend a lot of time in Article 250 on my changes courses. And let's be honest, man, I'm, I'm going to give credit where it's due. Uh, Panel 5 has done a bang-up job with Article 250. There's not too much left to really fix in Article 250. Uh, but in the 2023, they made quite a few different changes and mainly clarifications, but um, we're going to spend some time on it this time. I think we got four or five topics we're going to talk about, and we're going to start with 250.8, which is grounding and bonding connections. All right, Article 250, grounding and bonding. 250.8, connections, the section was revised for technical accuracy. Uh, this is an important section, right? I mean, anytime we talk about connections and terminations, by, by definition, it, it has to be important, right? Where do the failures happen in an installation? Usually not in the middle of a conduit, right? Usually, usually not underground. Usually they happen at connections, right, and terminations. So anytime we talk about 110.14, that's always a big deal to me. Anytime we talk about 250.8, that's always a big deal for me, right? Why? Well, because these are talking about terminations. So 250.8, grounding and bonding connections. Only the methods indicated in 250.8a are allowed for connecting equipment grounding conductors, grounding electrode conductors, bonding jumpers, or grounding and bonding terminations. Okay, so looking at this picture, was this a violation? of the 2023 edition of the NEC. Okay, well, I mean, it, it, it's basically just a, a grounding terminal bar that they, you know, sawzalled in half and screwed to the outside of the enclosure. Now, the fact that they sawed off that thing and, and is that a violation? It's not listed. I, it, yeah, probably, that, that's probably a violation. But, but my issue here is how it's terminated. We took a sheet metal screw, right, a drywall screw, sheet metal screw, and we drilled it into the enclosure. Okay, well, I've got a couple of problems here. Number one, I, I'm not in love with the fact that we've got a sharp screw penetrating the enclosure. That's, that's not good. Um, there's specific requirements in, used to be 312.10, so it's probably 312.12 uh, in the 2026, so there's rules about that. But what about the fact that it's a coarse screw or, or, a, or a sheet metal screw? Was that a violation in the 2023? And the answer, believe it or not, was no. That was not a violation. What it used to say is that you were not allowed to terminate conductors with sheet metal screws, drywall screws, wood screws, things like that. Well, that's not a conductor termination. That's an equipment termination. We're terminating the ground bar to the enclosure. We're not terminating a wire to the enclosure. And look, I know some of you are rolling your eyes like, oh, give me a break. That's what the code meant. Yeah, I know that's what the code meant. I know. But it's not what it said. It said terminating the wire, you couldn't use a drywall screw. Okay, well, what about terminating the lug? Well, give me a break. Of course, that was always intended to be a violation. And now it is a violation. Clearly, the rules for terminating equipment, you have to use what? Sheet, <laughs> sheet metal screws. You can't use sheet metal screws. Uh, you can use threaded screws, right? Machine threaded screws if they engage at least two threads or are secured with a nut. You can use any of the methods described in 250.8a, but you can't use the other methods. So some nice little cleanup there fixes just a little, you know, accidental oversight in the code, but you know, Holes are in the code. When people find them, we plug them up, right? That's the process. So there you go. We're going to jump right ahead to 250.64 for the next video, and I hope you'll join me for it. See you later.